Hey, what's going on guys? In this project, we're going to build a mobile first responsive contact form. Now we're going to be using some CSS three techniques. We're going to use a little bit of grid CSS. Um, now we're just building the UI. We're not going to build a back end. What I'm going to do is I'm going to save that for another video. We'll implement this probably in PHP or, or some kind of back end server side language. Uh, but we're going to build the front end. Now this is what it's going to look like. And when I say mobile first, what I mean is just that we start off with designing it for a mobile screen for small screens, and then we'll gradually add in media queries to uh, to to change it for larger screens. So this is what it's going to look like on mobile screens. And as I go up, you'll see when I hit around 700 pixels, it's going to change and it, the grid's going to change so that we have uh, one fractional and two fractionals. Okay, a fractional is just a unit in in the CSS grid layout. So that's what it'll look like on desktops It has a max width of I think 1170 I think. All right, so that's what we'll be building in this video, guys. Like I said, we will later on do a back end so that it'll actually send an email um, or maybe we'll implement like Firebase or something like that. I don't know. You guys can leave some suggestions in the comments, uh, but that's what we'll be doing. So let's get started. So if you guys really like my videos and you learn a lot from them and maybe you have a couple extra dollars to spare, check out my Patreon page. I'm working on creating special content for patrons. You also get special deals on future courses and there's even an email support tier for all YouTube videos and projects. To learn more, visit patreon.com slash traversymedia. All right, guys, so we're going to get started here now. Usually in these types of videos, front end HTML, CSS, I use the Atom text editor. If you guys follow my channel, you probably know that I usually use VS code for for more back end stuff or even like Angular CLI stuff where I use the command line a lot. But I've been using VS code more lately and, and I'm leaning towards that over Atom. I think it's faster and um, there's a couple other perks that I like about it. Now, usually I'll use Atom Live Server so that it opens up my project on my local host. Um, I'm now using for VS Code something called Live Server. And if you go down to this icon here, this is the, the this will show you all your extensions or plugins. You'll see I have one called Live Server. If you want this, you just search for Live Server and it'll pop up and it'll have a little green install. Just click that and that'll install it. Um, now, one thing I thought was really cool is when I looked at the documentation here, this little image they have, this Acme web design, this is actually my project. They, they took this from my um, YouTube, uh, YouTube HTML responsive website tutorial, which is absolutely fine. I'm not complaining or anything. It's actually kind of flattering. Um, there's no license on it or anything, so they're free to use it. But I thought that was pretty cool and really surprising. But uh, anyway, so we have that installed. So I'm just going to go back to my folder here. Now what I have is a, an empty folder called responsive form. So just create that somewhere on your computer and we're going to create an index HTML file. All right, so we're going to need that and then we're also going to need a CSS file. So we'll create a file called style.css. Okay, those are the only two files we're going to need here. And we're going to start off with the HTML. Now I'm also using Emmet, which is actually installed by default on Visual Studio Code. If you're using Atom or Sublime Text or something, if you want to use Emmet, you'll have to install it as a plugin or an extension. All right. Now, once you have that, you can just do exclamation and tab. Actually, mine is set to control tab, but that'll give you just a basic HTML layout. It'll also give you a, a, a viewport meta tag, which is very important when it comes to responsiveness. And we're just going to go ahead and just change the title here to um, we'll just say Acme Web Design. All right, and then we're going to need to link to our CSS files. So we're going to go ahead and put a link tag in here to style.css. All right, now to start the server, all we have to do is right click and say open live server and that should open up automatically. The default port is going to be 50 uh, 5500. And there's obviously there's nothing here because we don't have anything in our body yet. So we're going to start with the HTML, which is going to be actually very simple. So we're going to create a container. So a div with the class of container. And then inside that, we're going to have an H1 with the class of brand. So this will be like the logo. Oh, what is going on here? This control tab is kind of messing with me lately. And inside the H1, let's say Acme web design 
and a lot of you guys probably noticed that I uploaded this video earlier. Um, I did some some pretty crazy misspellings. I, I put Ames Web Design instead of Acme. I also did some other little flops that that a lot of you guys probably wouldn't have even noticed, but they bothered me, so I'm redoing the video. Plus, I wanted to mention that we're going to be doing a back end later on. All right, so let's go ahead and create another div with the class of wrapper. This is actually going to be what we're going to apply the grid to. And in this wrapper, we're going to have basically two divs. One's going to be for the uh, the company info. And let me just grab uh, let me grab the finished pro product real quick, just so I can I can show you. So this here part, this is going to be company info and this is going to be contact. OK, those are going to be the two divs. So let's say company dash info. And then under that, we'll have contact. And if you guys hear my son upstairs, I apologize for that. He's being kind of loud. <laughs> so in the company info, we're going to have another we're going to have an H3. And again, we're going to say Acme Web Design. Make sure I spelled it right this time. And under that, we're going to have a UL. And inside whoop, inside the UL, we're going to have three LIs. With Emmet, we can actually do LI asterisk three and then tab and it'll give us three LIs. So we're going to have the address, the street address, which I'm going to say uh, 44 something street. Then we'll have the uh, we're going to have the phone number. I'm just going to do all fives here. And then we'll have the email. So we'll just say test at test start. We'll say test at Acme dot test. All right, so let's go ahead and save that and this will auto auto load if you're using the dev server, it'll auto load. And that's pretty much all we need in the company info. All right, now on the contact, we're going to have our form, but we're first going to have an H3. So let's go ahead and say H3. We'll say uh, email us. And then under that, we're going to have our form. OK, we're not going to need an action because, again, we're just doing the front end. We're not actually going to be submitting it yet. And then each label and input combination is going to be wrapped in a paragraph. So let's put a paragraph and then a label. We don't really need a for attribute uh, inside the label. This is going to be for the name. And then under that, we'll have an input with a type of text and we'll give our inputs a name attribute. This one is going to be name. And then what I'm going to do is copy that and then we're going to do. Let's see, two, three. Four, five, I believe we're going to do one, two, three, four, five. Yeah. So after name, we're going to have the company. So this will be the company name. And then we'll have the email. And for email, we can change the type from text to email. And next we'll have the phone or we'll say phone number and we'll change the name to phone. Let's actually change email to email address. And then right here is going to be the message. OK, message is going to be a text area, not an input. So we'll go ahead and say text area. Name is going to be message. And text areas need to have a closing tag. So we're going to do that. Let's also give it a rows attribute to make it a little bigger, a little higher. All right, and then we're also going to need a submit button. I'm also going to put that in a paragraph. So this is going to have a we'll just do button. So button and we'll just say submit. All right, so that's our form. Let's save it and it looks absolutely horrible because forms look atrocious without any CSS. Uh, pretty much all HTML does. So that's it for the HTML. Now we're going to style the CSS. So let's go to style.css. And we're going to start basically from top to bottom. Now, what I want to do is is I want to take the asterisk, which means everything. OK, so this this is basically going to apply to all elements and I'm just going to apply a box sizing property. So box dash sizing and we're going to set it to border box. All right. And what that's going to do is it's going to take when whenever there's any width, it's going to factor in the margin and the padding into that width. OK, instead of adding it onto it. So we want to make sure we do that for everything. And then we're going to say for the body, 
we want a background of blue. Now the, the blue we're doing is actually going to be a hexadecimal. It's going to be uh, 92B, so 92B DE7. Oops, DE7. And with VS Code, you'll see it actually shows us the color, which is really cool. If you're using Atom, you can use a plugin called Pigments, which will do the same thing. Oh, what the heck? So let's see what else we're doing for the body. Let's set the color. The color is going to be a dark blue. That's also going to be a hexadecimal value of 485E74. Uh, okay, and you can see that that is a dark blue. Let's also set the line height to be a little bigger. So line height is basically the, 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 the space in between the text. So it's going to be 1.6. We're also going to set uh, the font family. So font family. And I'm actually going to use this right here. I don't know how to pronounce this. Sego, Sego UI. And then with a backup of Tahoma, Geneva, uh, Verdana, and then Sans Serif. So that's what our font's going to be. So if I save this, you'll see that it'll update. All right, so we have our blue background. We have our font change. Uh, last thing that I want to do in the body is just add a little bit of padding. We're going to set it to 1M and save. All right, so that's the body. Next, we're going to move on to the container, which wraps around everything. Uh, we're going to set a width for the container, or I'm sorry, a max width, because we want this to be responsive. Max width of 1170 pixels. Okay, and then we're going to set just auto margin on the left and right. So set that to auto, and then we're also going to set padding 1M as well. All right, so there's our container. Now, if I were to make this bigger, you'll see that it'll stay in the middle. Okay, so it's going to have a max width of 1170. All right, so next thing we're going to work on is uh, let's jump to the UL. So all the unordered lists, we're going to set the list style to none. We don't want any bullets. Okay, that'll get rid of the bullets. We also want to get rid of the default padding that a UL has. And that should be it. So Notice that I just did UL. Now this is going to pertain to any unordered list that's on this page. So even if we add another UL later on to the page, this will pertain to it. Okay, but a lot of the styles we're gonna we're gonna um, you know make them only for, for instance, the contact form. So we'll do like if we wanted to do the UL specifically inside company info, we do dot company info UL. All right, hopefully that makes sense. Now for the brand, the Acme web design, what I want to do for that is just center it. Um, uh, yeah, just text align center. Okay, move that over. And then one thing I forgot to do is for the uh, the the word Acme in the H, not the H3, the H1 in the branding. I want to wrap that in a span because I want to make that white. I want to make that a different color than the rest. So we'll wrap a span around that. And then what we'll do is we'll say brand span and we'll say color white. OK, it just gives it a little bit of, um, I don't know, a better look, I think. So next thing we're going to do is the wrapper. So the wrapper, can, it goes around everything. OK, so let's go ahead and say dot wrapper. And the wrapper, we're going to add a box shadow. So we want a box shadow to go all the way around and we're going to set this to 0, 0, 20 pixels, 0. And then we're going to do for the color an RGBA value. OK, now the RGBA, we're going to do the same color as the dark blue, like this dark blue, except we're going to add a little bit of opacity. So the RGBA value is going to be 72 for red. It's going to be 94 for green. And it's going to be 116 for blue. And then for the opacity, we're going to do 0 0.7. All right, so let's go ahead and save that. And now you can see we have this border shadow around the whole wrapper. Now, as far as padding, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the wrapper and I'm going to say all the direct elements, everything inside the wrapper, I'm going to give a pat, I'm going to give a, a padding of 1M. So we'll save that. 
and you can see it's added padding to everything inside directly inside the wrapper. All right, so now we're going to work on the com company info, which is this area right here. So let's say dot company info. And we're going to give this a light blue background. So the hexadecimal for that is going to be C9E 6FF. Okay, we'll save that. And you can see now it has a light blue background. Um, let's see, I also want to add a little bit of style to the H3 and the UL right here. So let's say dot company info H3 and also company info UL. Okay, so I want both to be aligned to the center. Save that. And also for the margin, I want it to be zero everywhere except the bottom. I want to do one rem. And that's it. So that's it for the company info. So for the contact area, this right here, I want to add uh, a white color or a light gray, light bluish kind of color. So let's say contact and we're going to say background. And the value for this is going to be F9F um, EFF. Okay, so I think there's a tint of blue in there. It looks like it. Save that or maybe not, but I don't know. It looks all right. So that's going to be the background. Now, the rest of the stuff here is going to be part of the form. So I'm going to put a comment here, just say form styles. So this will be like the inputs and stuff. Uh, let's do the form itself. So contact form. What we're saying here is we're taking the div that has the, the class of contact and then we're targeting the form tag. OK, right here. So for this, we want to actually make it a grid. We're going to say display grid. And we're going to say we want the grid template columns. Grid template columns. We're going to do one fractional and one fractional. And if I save that, it'll split it up into one and one. All right. And if you want to know more about the grid CSS, uh, I'd suggest watching the crash course that I did. I just did it like, uh, I don't know, a week and a half ago. We're also going to add a little bit of grid gap. We'll say 20 pixels, save that. And that should be good for the form itself. Now for the label, let's say contact form label. We're just going to display as a block. Make sure it's displayed as a block. And let's see now. See how there's so much space in between these inputs. That's from the paragraph margin. So what we're going to do is say contact form paragraphs. And we want to set the margin to zero and save. Okay, I think it's a default. I think paragraphs have a either a five or a ten pixel top and bottom. I can't remember. Now we have an issue here, and that's that the message and the submit. I want those to to both be on the same. You know, to have their own row here with the grid. So what we can do is we can use a property called grid column. So let's say contact. Uh, we're going to say contact form and we're going to have a class of full. OK, now we haven't applied that class yet. So let's go back to our HTML and the paragraph with the message. We're going to give a class of full and the paragraph with the submit button. We're going to give a class of full. And then what we'll do is we'll say grid column and we're going to say one to three. So we basically want it to stretch out one to three. So if I save it, you'll see now they're on their own line and they're actually going to stretch out all the way. Now, the reason they're not stretched out is because we need to actually set the width of the text area and the input or the I'm sorry, the button to 100 percent. All right. So, yeah, let's go ahead and do that. So we'll say dot contact form button. Okay, so we want the button. We also want contact oh, contact form. Let's do inputs because I also want the inputs to be 100 percent and also contact form text area. Okay, so all of these should have a width of 100 percent and save. And now it goes all the way across. All right, so let's now take care of um, Let's see. Actually, you know what? We're going to give that a padding too. So 
So all of these will have a padding of 1M. There we go. And now we want to take care of the button because that button doesn't look very good. So let's say contact, target the form, and then the button inside that form. So we're going to give it a background. Okay, the background is going to be a hexadecimal of C9E. So C9E6FF. Save that. You can see the colors changed. Now with buttons, you need to set you need to deal with the border because that doesn't look very good. So we're just going to set the border to zero. All right, and then let's see. We also want to do Uh, I want to make the the text. I want to make it uppercase. So I'm going to use the text transform property and say uppercase. Okay. so now let's take care of the hover and the focus state of the button. I want it to be a different color. So I'll say contact form button colon hover comma. And then let's also do the focus. So colon colon focus. And let's see, we're going to change the background to the same color. Let's see, it's going to be. Wait a minute. C9E. Yeah, so the focus. We're going to change it to the same color as the the uh, the background. I'm sorry, the background text like this. Is that right? It doesn't look right. No, no, same color as the background. So this and this hexadecimal value right here, this 92 B D E seven. So let's go ahead and paste that in. All right, we'll save it. And now when we hover over it. You can see that it changes color. So I also want to change the color of the text to white when we hover over it. Okay, so it changes the text changes to white. Um, let's also set the outline to zero. And then I want to add a transition instead of just changing like quickly like that. I want it to slowly fade in. So we're going to use the CSS transition property. So we want to say transition the background color. Transition the background color and then the length for we'll, we'll say two seconds and then we'll say ease out. So we'll save and now when I hover over it, you'll see that in two seconds it slowly fades into the, the color. All right, just a, an added effect, I guess. All right, so we're looking pretty good. Let's do let's take care of the border. Uh, let's see. So the border for the actually all of them. Yeah, so we can go right here where we have the button, the input in the text area and we'll add a border. of one pixel solid and for the color we're going to use that um, that C9 E uh, C9 E 6 FF and save and now we have a light blue border. Okay, let's see. So we're just about done with the mobile version. Um, yeah, that looks good. Now, if I if I were to make this bigger, it's going to it's not going to change. It's just it's this is we've done what we've done is mobile first. We've we've dealt with the small screen size first. So now what we'll do is we'll add a media query for bigger sizes. So let's go down to the bottom here and I'll just put a comment. We'll say large screens. And we're going to add a media query. So we'll say at media. And we're going to say inside here is a parameter. We're going to do a min width. So min dash width of 700 pixels. And what now what this means is that any styles we put within this these um, curly braces, they're only going to be in effect if the if the window, if the screen size is bigger than 700 pixels. So just to test it out, let's just say body display none. and save and you'll see everything just went away because the screen size is bigger than 700 pixels. But if I make it smaller, once it hits below 700, it comes back. Okay, the body is no longer display none. So that we know that the media query works. Now what we're going to do is take the wrapper and we're going to just we're going to say display grid and we're going to set we're going to change the grid template column. 
we're going to set it to one fractional and then two fractional and save. And now if we look, what it's done is it's taken the the info, the company info area and moved it to the side. Okay, so this is the one fractional and this is the two. Now I also want to increase the padding a little bit on bigger screens. So we're going to say dot wrapper and then all elements inside the wrapper. We're going to set the padding to 2M instead of one. Okay, and then the last thing I want to do is I don't want this stuff to be centered that or the branding. So we're going to say company uh, company info and we want the H3 also the company info UL and also the brand. What I'm going to do is text a line to the left and save. And now you'll see those are no longer centered. Okay, so this is going to be the desktop view. And if we go back down to mobile, everything goes back to how we had it. All right, so that's going to be it for the, the basic design. Now, just for an added bonus, we're going to add some icons. We're also going to add animate CSS. So let's go ahead and grab the. Um, yeah. Oh, that that confused me. So this is the finished one. You see, we have the icons. I'm just going to close that so we don't get confused. So let's let's just search for the font awesome CDN. And it's going to be the first link here. So we'll grab the link tag and copy. We're going to go up to the top of the HTML file and we'll put it in right above our style CSS. Let me just wrap this so you guys can see everything. All right. So now that we have font awesome we can now add our icon. So I'm going to go right where we have the street name inside the LI. We're going to have an I tag with a class of FA and also a class of FA dash road. And we're going to put a space after it like that. All right. So that'll give us a little street icon. I'm going to copy this, paste it in here. This one's going to be FA phone. And then for this one here, This is going to be FA dash envelope and we'll save it. Let's go back and now we have our icons. All right. So last thing we're going to do is the animate CSS. So I'm going to say animate CSS CDN. And we're going to grab this right here. We'll say copy link tag, put it in right under font awesome. And all we're going to do is need to, we're just going to add two classes to the wrapper. So we're going to add animated, which just tells it that we want it to use animate CSS and then whatever the, the, the type of animation we want. The one we want is uh, actually let me check bounce in left. So bounce in left and save and let's reload and you'll see it just comes in from the left. So that's going to be it for this video. Uh, like I said, I will look into doing a back end setup for this. I think the most practical thing would be PHP, especially if you wanted to send an actual email. Um, another thing we could do is we could set we could link it to some kind of database, whether it you know is through PHP to MySQL or we could hook up some JavaScript and we could make it go to Firebase or to um, MongoDB. MLab has a really good uh, data API, which is a remote MongoDB database. So if you guys want to leave some suggestions, that's all right. Uh, but I think PHP would probably be the most practical and especially when it comes to deploying, you could just throw it right up on a, you know, HostGate or shared hosting or whatever. So um, that's going to be it, guys. Now, uh, I do realize that my content has been very diverse lately. Um, I hope you guys can appreciate that. I know some of you are, you know, really hardcore programmers that might may be saying, you know, I don't want to be able to build a fucking contact form. You know, I want to get into, uh, you know, GraphQL and, and um, MongoDB and Redis and, and back end stuff. But realize that, you know, half of my subscribers are are pretty new to web development. They're front end developers and, um, you know, I want to tend to them as well. So I'm trying to be very diverse. Hopefully I'm doing a pretty good job with that and keeping you guys happy. Um, so that's it. Thanks for watching. If you liked it, please leave a like. If you're not subscribed, please hit that subscribe button. And thank you for watching.